All right, how's it going, y'all? Today we're gonna to be talking about how to set up ZFS snapshots on TrueNAS Core 12 and see how powerful they are. They have a lot of really great features that can really help protect your data and even have multiple versions of files while taking very little storage space. For those of you who watch a lot of my Synology videos, I'm always talking about Synology BTRFS and BTRFS snapshots. BTRFS and ZFS both have very similar snapshots and they both have a lot of similar features. And so ZFS in, in some ways is considered a little bit more powerful. It can scale to petabytes in size and things like that. But they both have these great snapshot features that let you take snapshots and restore from them without really taking up any extra storage space. It's awesome. All right, and so before we get into this, we need to talk a little bit about what ZFS is. ZFS is an incredibly complex file system that is at the heart of TrueNAS Core. It is essentially what is in charge of storing the data for TrueNAS. So all of your files, everything is stored in ZFS and it handles talking to the disks and making sure that all the data is stored and also is sent around. It is not like a normal file system. It is almost like an object oriented file system. I'm not going to go super in depth here, but essentially what it does is everything is just considered a pointer. So when you have your data set, really all you have is a system of pointers to different file locations that make up those files. Then anytime there's a modification to a file, instead of deleting that file and then putting it right back in the same place with the new modification, which is what most file systems do, CFS instead just saves that change to a different part of the disk. Then it changes the pointer to now point to that new part of the disk, but it doesn't delete that old part of the data, not yet at least. By doing this, all you have to do is essentially save off a list of all those pointers to get a perfect snapshot of exactly how your file system is. And that's what ZFS snapshots are. This means you can just take a snapshot and it doesn't take up any extra space because really all it is is a list of pointers, which is basically zero space in size. And that's kind of how it works. Then once the last snapshot that is referencing that old data is deleted, that's when ZFS says, okay, next time I need to write something, I can write it there. And so that's how the entire system works and is why you can restore ZFS snapshots almost instantaneously because you're not copying new data to the disk. You're just rearranging how everything points. And that's really where the true power of ZFS is. And it's very similar to how BTRFS works. And so these snapshots can be used in so many different manners. They're great for file system backups. You can take an entire snapshot of the file system and send it over to another machine running ZFS. And ZFS, because it knows all of this, will only send the difference in data between the remote and the local machine. That means you can have constant offsite backups taking up very little bandwidth because they're just sending the deltas. This also means you can keep a ton of local snapshots on your device. This way, if somebody accidentally deletes a file, corrupts something, encrypts the NAS, anything, you're able to easily roll back without really taking up that much extra storage. The way snapshots work is really all it is is how long to keep the data. And so when you're doing periodic snapshots, the way to kind of think about how much data it's gonna take up is it's really just a time delay before you get that data back. So say I keep a snapshot of the day for three weeks. That means if I delete a file today, in three weeks, I'm gonna get that storage back from that file. Then any modifications, same thing. It's basically gonna take three weeks to roll out of the file system, and then I'll get that storage back. You can always go back and say, okay, I know I've just deleted a bunch of files. I know I've got a good copy of the file system. Everything's good. Let's delete old snapshots so we can get storage back. You can do that manually, but you can also just say, okay, I'll wait three weeks and then I'll get the storage back. And so that's probably the biggest thing I feel like people have misunderstood about BTRFS and ZFS snapshots. They'll say, well, what if I take a snapshot and the entire file system is full? Well, it won't matter. It's basically just like if your file system was full. You can not add any more data to it, but taking a snapshot isn't going to increase your data. It's just going to take longer to get your data back in that sense. All right, and so now that we've kind of gone over ZFS and what ZFS snapshots are, let's look at how we can implement them in TrueNAS Core. And so we'll go ahead and go into storage and we'll look at pools. And we'll see right here, I've made this tutorial ZFS data set. And you can see right here, it's an SMB share and I've just thrown some data in there. Then if we look over here, we've got a few options and what we can do is click on it and say, create snapshot. And we can name it. 
And then you want to click recursive so that way any child data sets are also part of the snapshot. And we'll just go ahead and say create snapshot. Snapshot successfully created. And now we can go ahead and view it under snapshots. And so you can see right here, the tutorial snap is only taking up basically zero bytes. That is because there's been no modifications to the file system that are keeping in that snapshot. Essentially what that's saying is if we have the snapshot or not, it's gonna be the exact same space. And it's referencing 43 gigabytes. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just delete a couple of files out of that data set. So I'm deleting 15 gigabytes of data from that data set. All right, and so now we'll go ahead and refresh it. And so now we can see, since we removed 15 gigabytes from that original data set, they're still stored in this tutorial snapshot. That's because until we delete the snapshot, they will not be removed from the disk. And so the reason it's using 14.25 gigabytes now is because it is holding on to, it is the only thing holding on to that one file I deleted that was 14.25 gigabytes. That means if I delete this, we will then get that data back. And so that's how the use metric works. And so we've got a ton of options for what we can do here. So say, oh no, I did not mean to delete that file. We've got kind of two different options for what we can do. We can go in here and we've got either rollback or clone to new data set. So rollback is a little bit risky and we'll go ahead and show it now. Rollback is basically a, hey, you really have to know what you're doing because we're just going to roll back everything and we're going to delete every single snapshot that was taken after this snapshot was taken. And so it just rolls back all the way. And so it is quite dangerous. And so it's not really recommended unless you really know what you're doing. And so they've got these safety checks. And so what you can do is send it offsite or something and make sure you've got good copies and then go ahead and do the no safety check once you really know everything's good. But in reality, it's still kind of risky because it could go roll back way further than you expect and things like that. And then you could lose ZFS snapshots. The way easier way to do it would be to go in here and go ahead and say clone to new data set. And so we'll just go ahead and say that. And so now you can see right here, we have this new tutorial snapshot clone that is a new data set. And I'll just go ahead and make it available on SMB really quickly, so that way we can see it. All right, and so now right here, boom, we've got this new SMB pool. So let's go ahead and open that up. And so we can see, I can just connect to it. And so now we've got basically two different versions of the exact same thing. And so you can manually go through and just copy anything back that you need it. So we can see that this is how the file system was when I took that snapshot, and this is how it is today. And so you can just manually copy things back just like that, and that is by far the safest way of doing it because it doesn't delete anything. It lets you manually do everything, though it is a little bit more time intensive. And so that way you can just go, okay, I did want this file back, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy it back in there. And just like that, we've got it back how you want it. And so now you're like, okay, we've done everything we want to. So now we can just go ahead and inject it. We can inject that clone. And then I'll just delete it from the SMB. And now we can also just remove it from the data set. And so if you look right here, you can see something that's really interesting about ZFS. So you can see right here, it just says that it took about a megabyte of space up. In reality, there are about 50 gigabytes of files in that folder. The reason it's only taking up a megabyte of space is because it's only using those old snapshots and pointers to files that already exist on the disks. And so that's what it's doing. That's why it happens instantaneously because it doesn't have to copy any new data. Instead, it just has to recreate that pointer table that says where all the data is stored. And so now if we want to, we can go ahead and just delete it because it's just a clone data set. I just always copy this guy. And so another thing you can see now is now instead of using the 
45 gigabytes that we were using earlier, now we're using 58 gigabytes. That's because we have a snapshot of the file twice. And so we've essentially got two copies of that exact same file that I deleted. So remember how I hit delete on it, and then we went back into the old snapshot and copied it using SMB. So ZFS, because I've got deduplication disabled, did not realize that that file is already stored on disk. And so that's why that storage was taken up twice. So now we can go into snapshots and we'll see that if we delete this, the data set has dropped back to the original file size of everything because we're no longer referencing that original copy of the file that we then copied back in. And so that's kind of how the manual snapshot process works. And it can be really powerful and you can just store so much data here and really have fine grain control in case anything happens. Then what makes it really powerful is under tasks, the periodic snapshot tasks. So there's two different versions of this. There's periodic snapshots and then there's replication. Replication takes the snapshots on your local machine and sends them to a remote ZFS machine. And so that way you can keep a offsite backup of your exact file system exactly how it was. And then periodic just takes them and stores them locally. So we can go ahead and click add and we'll go ahead and just set it up. So we'll want to do this on that tutorial one and we'll want it recursive. You can also exclude child data sets here if you want to. And then we've got some options here for schedule. Snapshot lifetime is essentially from when the snapshot is taken, how long do you keep it until it gets deleted? If you had this 10 years, you would essentially have every modification to your entire file system for the past 10 years. It would be incredibly storage inefficient, yada, yada, yada. And so you can say, okay, I want a daily snapshot and I want to keep that for the past 14 days or the past two weeks. Or you can say, I want an hourly snapshot and I want to keep it for two weeks. And you can even with the hourly snapshots say when to begin and when to end. Then there's the allow taking empty snapshots, which at first, why would you want that? It's kind of useless to have an empty snapshot, right? Well, it's not in this case. So say you wanted a snapshot of the hour for the past two days, and then you want a snapshot of the day for the past two weeks. What you would do is you would first create one of a snapshot of the hour and you would say, okay, we want to keep it for two days, just 2D. And we'll say we want it every hour for the entire thing. All right. Then you would create another task. This is for the daily one. So now we want the daily one every two weeks. The reason you probably want to tick allow taking empty snapshots because you want to make sure that this one that's on the two week schedule that stays alive for two weeks still gets taken and still gets kept. So for example, if the hourly snapshot task ran a second before the daily one ran, then this daily one would be empty, right? Because there would be no change in the file system between the one that was run a second before it and it. Therefore, if we had this disabled right here, it would not take that daily snapshot. However, we only have the hourly snapshots kept for two days. So therefore, at the end of those two days, we would delete that snapshot that was before it. Therefore, if we did not have this allow taking of empty snapshots, that data would be lost. We would not have a snapshot of the day for that day. And so that's why it's in there. And that's why it can be really important if you're doing it like that. And so this setup allows us to say, okay, We'll have a snapshot of the hour for the past two days, which is this very first one right here. And then we'll have a snapshot of the day for two weeks, which is this one. And that is how that is all set up. Then you can have them automatically replicate to an offsite target. I've been planning on making a video on this. Once I get another ZFS box going, I for sure will be, but it is incredibly powerful. All right, well, I think that's actually it for this tutorial. I hope this really helped shore up all the things you can do in TrueNAS Core with ZFS snapshots and how powerful ZFS snapshots can be. Go ahead and leave any other tutorials you'd like to see me make in the comments below. And if you want to get early access to all my videos, you can sponsor the channel and there's a link for that in the description. All right, have a good one. Bye.